reading Slut Tribe Janine Palmer here, Spirit Silver Moon for Harmony Energy Healing. And today I want to talk about um, what we try to heal and others. So that's a journey that is for ourselves, but sometimes we feel drawn to others. and healing uh, the work that I do is for emotional and spiritual healing and some people are ready for that on their journeys and they know it and they embrace it they're drawn to it it uh, is something that they find helpful okay so uh, what I'm talking about is from my perspective or my limited perspective from my experiences, which are different to other people's, but they might be similar to some people's. So some of what I've learned from, or some of what I share from what I've learned may or may not be helpful to certain people. And I wanna use an analogy with this because um, sometimes when we might not know to what degree we ourselves are wounded or stuck, our energy blocks, um, what affects us emotionally, um, what triggers us, why we feel the way we do, why we react the way we do. Sometimes we don't really know what that is until someone reflects that back to us. Um, so, and then we might feel drawn towards someone in a way we don't quite fully recognize. In other words, souls recognize souls so we might recognize something in someone that's different than something we see in someone else that we feel drawn to and this can get kind of deep but it could be a karmic thing it could be healing something from a previous experience when i say that i mean a previous life experience um depending on how open people are to what that is or isn't so um I think sometimes we're drawn to people for a reason that we can't maybe even really totally explain. Um, it is for healing something. It said the way to end karma is to forgive yourself, but it's also through love, the love that we share. And we're tested through that experience, whatever that is, whatever we think that is when we're sharing love with someone. Um, and what comes back to us and what we do with it. So sometimes we're, we're drawn to someone that's not healed because we feel like we can be something for them, like um, a healing force, a positive force. Like we can be helpful, like we care enough about them, we have enough compassion, we want to help them. And I want to use the analogy of stray, pet, stray animals, wounded animals. I know when we were young, my mom would say, like, if we caught a little being creature or some sort we could have it for the day to play with it or whatever we do but then we had to let it go because that needed to be in its own environment we don't want to trap and hold things because they won't survive in that captivity and that goes with relationships too so sometimes we might give to another on a level that's flowing that's balanced that's not too needy and not functioning too much from some woundedness um, and that's a wonderful thing when it happens, but what happens when it doesn't last? So sometimes masks fall, sometimes wounds reveal themselves, something's triggered, something comes up, and we're like, whoa, you know, and it can be hard to deal with it when people um, shut down, they have walls, they project their issues, they gaslight you, um, and you get damaged by this because you're trying to hold a place of love for someone that doesn't know how to be that for you. Okay, so there's some balance. So when a person finds like, um, let's say an injured animal and they bring it home and they care for it with love, they uh, help rehabilitate it and they have a connection with that being. In this case, we're talking about an animal. There's a connection and we get something from being a giving being to help someone to care enough to help someone to heal um, and that animal probably gives us something back too because animals know how to love unconditionally so um, 
sometimes people then will keep the animal as a pet. They want to keep that thing in their life and other people will rehabilitate it and then release it back into the wild. It doesn't mean they don't have a connection. That's a harder thing to do is to let that go. But the connection that we share will always be there. But some people want to hold on to something and that might stifle it. That being might not thrive in that captivity or whatever it is. So same thing if we come into to do like something, okay, we're drawn to a person that's wounded and we think, oh, I'm, I'm going to come in and be a good force in this person's life and help them. And maybe we do, but only to a degree. And then we start to hit the walls and then we start to have the projectiles that come from the effects of their wounds towards us and we're not a target. So, um, things are going to come in and out of our lives because things in earth life are always changing. Um, nothing stays the same when people get frustrated and, you know, saddened by that, that things change, that something that we once had changes. It's not that thing anymore. Uh, because it's not supposed to be. So we gain something from it, from that experience, knowledge, wisdom, deeper knowing. We learn more about ourselves. We learn more about what we won't tolerate from others. We learn more about how that wound in that other person that we try to help them with is something we can't fix if they're not doing their own work. So this is just about uh, relationships to where we're drawn to someone who's wounded. So is that why we even had that relationship? Because someone that was weaker or wounded for a time let us in. And so, um, but when that person strengthened or the situation, it ran its course and it was time for it to change and it's time for someone to move on. Um, sometimes we take it so hard because we're not letting that flow because we have an attachment to that thing or that person or our, or being or whatever, or our idea of what, um, we want it to be or wish it still was. Um, so we resist, we don't let go and we keep ourselves trapped at a particular level of suf suffering that has to do with our thoughts. Um, so this is where writing can be very helpful journaling, uh, writing down our feelings. Um, and what can we do that's creative for ourselves with, uh, what we learn from those experiences, even if it's art or painting or drawing or putting ourselves into something, into a cause. These are the questions. So, um, I think that people here on this earth journey are all in some sort of a healing process, whether they know it or not. So if we can recognize that if someone was there for us when we were wounded or, or we were there for someone when they were wounded and then strengthening and healing happens, things are going to change. And hopefully we're happy that that person um, is better and that maybe we could be of help. Um, and then it's the hard part is to, uh, let them go. It's like, uh, oh, well I helped them and they helped me. And w w where did they go? Why aren't they here? Why they wonder why we're not there? Because sometimes we have to move on from the wounds of other people because it's so stagnant and it's so destructive to our spirit, uh, that we decide that we can't be there anymore. it doesn't mean we don't care about that person. It just means that, um, in an effort to take care of ourselves, sometimes we have to step away from the energy that does not serve. So that's all this video is about today. Peace.